What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel we're going over some preventative maintenance things uh, for your home and your hot water heater. I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to drain your hot water heater and just how important it is. First, I'm going to explain it on the drawing board, just what's going on and what we need to prevent. And then we're going to go downstairs and we're going to do it hands on. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned. Guys, let's talk about exactly what we're about to do. All right, here's your hot water tank. I'm going to show you exactly why, why it's imperative that you flush your tank yearly. So anywhere you have input from your water, whether it's from a well or a municipality, you're going to have contaminants in the water. So uh, if you live, uh, Local to me is a municipality that has a bunch of calcium in their water. So I've been on many install jobs where a hot water heater has lasted three or four years and it is absolutely toast and full of calcium. So what happens is all these contaminants and these solids pack up in the bottom of your uh, water heater because the solids fall down in the water, right? They pack in and make this basically a coral reef in the bottom of your hot water heater. Whether you have an electric water heater, you have elements coming out like this, or you have gas, all right, your gas burner at the bottom will, it, it inevitably just heats the bottom of the cast iron tank. If you have this coral reef of solids just packed in the bottom couple inches of your hot water heater, it's going to be horribly inefficient. And it's also gonna cause undue stress on the system because you're superheating these solids in order to get this water to temperature. So uh, if you have a, an electric water heater, here, your, your uh, first in, in, uh, indicator that you are packed full of solids is your bottom uh, heating element goes out. Now, it goes out because it is packed around with solids and it superheats and it basically just uh, nails that, that uh, element. It just destroys it um, in an instant after you've packed it full and it can't get water in there anymore. So that is why it's absolutely imperative to drain your water heater once a year to keep all these sediments out of the tank. So I'm gonna show you when we go downstairs, you don't wanna just open your valve 100% right away. This is the number one takeaway from this video. Do not open your valve all the way right away because you're going to basically take all this, all of this weight and all of this pressure from this water and you're gonna shove the contents of anything, any crap that's in here, you're gonna shove them right into your valve or down your hose. So now you've clogged up that valve, now you need to take out your valve, okay? So just, just think about it, go slow, uh, open it slowly, I will show you downstairs, I'll open it slowly, back closed, open it slowly, back closed, so that you're trying to get water and sediment out of this, uh, this drain at the same time. You don't want all sediment or you're gonna clog it in a hurry. Trust me, I've been there. So if you take this off and no water comes out, you have a problem. If you take the valve off of the tank and no water comes out, you might as well plan on replacing this tank very, very soon because it is packed with sediment. So I've seen it to the point where uh, we didn't see the end of the sediment that, come, that was coming out of the tank. Uh, we ended up having to cut it apart and it was more than a third of the way full with calcium deposits. So I've been there, I've seen it. This is why I'm making the video for you. So drain your tank once a year, drain it out of a hose. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Let's go downstairs. All right, so now that we're down by the water heater, um, first things first is you always want to turn off the power to an electric water heater. Um, you can usually tell if it's electric or gas because a gas water heater uh, would have a cover down here and a gas valve, you would have another pipe over here that would be your gas line. So I'll roll in a picture of a gas valve water heater now so you can decipher wh whether you have electric or you have gas. If you don't have a valve on the outside and you have two access covers, this is where your uh, heating elements are 
and your thermostats. So we know this is an electric water heater. We're gonna swoop over to our panel here and shut off the water heater. Okay, now the reason why you want to shut that off is because as we, as we drain water out of here and the elements don't have any water to heat up, they'll get super hot and you can burn them out very, very quickly. Remember, always shut off the water or always shut off the uh, electric or the gas before starting this process. Now, the next step is to shut off the main water line to that fills the uh, hot water heater. So I'll shut off the main water line here. Um, it should go in the cold outlet. You can usually tell on the top of it. See, it says cold. That's where your cold water is coming in. Wow, it's a little dusty down here. I need to dust. Uh, the cold is always where it comes in and then the hot is where it goes out. So uh, we've shut off our water here. Now what we're going to do is hook a hose up. Uh, usually you'll either have a drain plug like this or a, a uh, drain silcock here like this, or you'll have one on the side. Um, sometimes they're plastic and they have a little slot in them. Just take a screwdriver to uh, manipulate that, uh, you know, that drain. All right, so I always just use a nice cheap hose um, and thread it onto my connection here. Uh, you would do the same uh, and route it to a drain uh, that's close by. Um, I always route mine into the floor drain on the other side of the basement. So uh, when you're doing this, you want to open them slowly and close them, open them slowly and close them until it's all the way open. Um, that way, when you stir up your sediment, like I was talking about earlier, you're not flushing it all down through here and clogging your hose. So you'll be able to hear it if there's sediment and you're getting a lot of uh, crap coming through. Okay. So literally, uh, I didn't hear much other than right there at the beginning, there might have been some crap in the bottom of the tank, but I slowly opened it and closed it so as to not let it go all at once. Um, you don't want to clog your tube. So let's go over to the other end of the hose and make sure that it is draining. Okay, so we have very little draining out. So the reason why we have very little draining out is because uh, it's basically creating a pressure on the house. So we need to open up a, a, a uh, sink upstairs and allow the air to uh, basically uh, allow the water to flow out. So go upstairs or in another part of the house and open up a sink and it will drain faster. All right, you hear the pressure coming through? Okay, so it's definitely got suction on this, uh, this outlet. All right, back down in our drain, you can see we're flowing a lot more water. So we'll go ahead and continue to drain this out. Um, like I said, I recommend doing it once a year just to get any sediment or crap out of the bottom of the tank. All right, now that we're done draining, we can go ahead and close our valve here. And what we're going to do is refill the tank. So remember your, uh, your faucet is still open upstairs or another part of your house. So what we're going to do is literally just close this off and we're going to slowly turn this on. So we're going to turn on our inlet water here and let it flow slowly. Now I always just crack it a little bit. I don't put it on full force right away. You will hear the you will hear the bubbles and everything going through the water tank. Now it is filling it completely up, and up until it goes back out to our faucet that's open. Let's go upstairs and wait on it. This will take a while to fill. Um, this one's 60 gallons, so it's going to take a while to fill that up.
All right, so you guys might get a lot of air coming out of All right, perfectly normal to get a lot of air coming out of the system. Just wanna make sure you run it on hot for a while um, and purge all of the air out of the system that you uh, basically introduced by flushing it. Some sinks it might take a while, some sinks are right away. It just depends on how far it is from the hot water heater. All right, now that we know that we have flushed all of our water out and all of the air is purged out of the system, we know the water heater is completely full. We can come back over to the breaker panel and switch our water heater back on and or light the gas pilot on the water heater. So let's wrap this video up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Of course, you know what time it is. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. Interact with me in the comments. Let's see exactly what you have to say. If you have any questions, post them up. I try to get back to my commenters at least within one day or 24 hours. So uh, I'll try to help you out if I can. I hope that we will help you in your situation and you don't have to call the man. That's what the channel is all about. I'll see you guys in the next one.